now I would like to call upon stage uh, Sophia Salas to present about the business opportunities in Costa Rica and the website inauguration of India Costa Rica uh, Cultural Council. So thank you for that introduction and I think it was very accurate what you had to say about Costa Rica. I know you've been hearing about many countries and it's like a Latin American marathon today. I think an overload of information and uh, perhaps uh, what I would like to start by saying is, uh, and I think you probably have a sense of it, Latin America, we're in the same geographic part of the world. Uh, we do share many commonalities. Most of our countries speak the same language, Spanish, uh, with the distinct difference of some of our Caribbean islands. Uh, but it's a country that despite all the many commonalities, we also are extremely different. Uh, and uh, so when you think of Latin America, uh, think of it as a region, but also please take your time to explore the different countries because we each have many different things to offer. So it's not a competition amongst us. And I think we always say India is so huge that if we just take each of one, each of us, a part of Indian companies for trade and investment, there's enough for all of us. So that's my first kind of introduction. Uh, namaskar. Uh, before I start presenting Costa Rica, uh, I would like to have a sense of the audience who am I speaking to. And to know, you can just raise your hands and if it's none, I don't mind. How many of you had heard of Costa Rica or, or are acquainted with Costa Rica before today? Okay. Quite a few. Excellent. And how many of you are doing some kind of business or investment relation uh, with Costa Rica or exploring? One. Very good. Two, three, four. Excellent. I'll, I'll be happy to, to speak with you. So, so that's promising, I have to say. I, just before I play a video, I, in terms of what makes Costa Rica special, it's a very small country. We're about the size of Punjab. 5.1 million inhabitants, nothing in comparison to the 1.4 million of India. Uh, but despite our small size, Costa Rica is a country that has become an international leader in many different topics. First of all, peace. We're the first country that voluntarily abolished the army 76 years back in 1948, took the bold decision to take that money that was being invested into the military and divert it to health and education. And that has made a huge difference in the country that we are today. So peace, politically stable, a strong democracy, strong institutional foundation, so stability again, a country that is a leader and is blessed in natural resources. We have uh, being pioneers in the ter sector of ecotourism and are known as a top international destination. Uh, we hold 6% of the world's biodiversity in such a small territory, so you can have a sense of how green our country is. And perhaps something that is very uh, distinct of Costa Rica, and we always say this, is uh, there's a lot of different geography in a very small territory. Uh, so you have a lot of microclimates, and that has a lot to do with our agricultural products. Quite diverse, excellent coffee, uh, and we always say you can have breakfast in the Atlantic and lunch in the Pacific Ocean. So it's a very unique country. Uh, also, uh, big exports are uh, currently, our highest export is medical devices. So I think it's something that some of you may be interested in. Uh, we've become a hub for IT companies. The biggest IT companies are in Costa Rica, and especially Indian. All the Indian big IT companies, Wipro, Infosys, Tech Mahindra, are all present there. Uh, but not only the big ones, but also small and medium Indian IT companies have identified Costa Rica as a ideal near shore destination. Very close to the US. Uh, with a country that is highly educated and very literate also in English. And uh, you have a perfect weather and pura vida environment 
that allows you to serve your US clientele in very promising conditions. So this is just an introduction. I'll reiterate some of this uh, further on and I would, now I would like to play a video. Thank you. find Costa Rica to have a tremendous amount of, of talent in terms of education, uh, capability, infrastructure, and ability to really meet the needs of the technologies that are brought here. Costa Rica has been able to establish itself as a premier destination for medical device manufacturing, and I think that is only going to continue to grow exponentially. The primary reason for that, I think, is the quality of its workforce. Number two, political stability. And number three, our geographic location, close to all major markets, and our willingness to engage in global trade. Why did Helm360 choose to invest in Costa Rica? Let's hear from their CEO, Ramindra Singh, to find out. We just got all the business needs. Pro business, democratic, elected government, amazing people, peaceful, and good talent of resources. Yes, we made the right choice choosing Costa Rica as our main share population. We are very pleased the investment we have done in Costa Rica. Then I highly recommend others to give a serious go to this near shore operations. Thank you. And this company we specifically chose to present to you because it's one of the companies that have invested in the rural free trade zone regimes. Don Raminder Singh now has bought property and is growing turmeric and organic Indian products. And something that I did not mention is we have a Costa Rica Indian association that it brings together around five to six hundred people, families, they celebrate Holi, Diwali, and the founders of this association uh, were IT CEO, CEOs, so they're very well connected and they work like a right hand of the Embassy of India in Panama, which is concurrent to Costa Rica. Uh, and as the ambassador of Uruguay said, we are hoping that India does take the decision to soon establish an embassy in Costa Rica itself. Once again, thank you, Dr. Yoshi, Ms. Dipali, and all the team of GIBF for the kind invitation. A very well, warm welcome to all of us in Pune. It's my first time here, and I have to say, very happy to be speaking to a new audience of investors or potential business partners for the region. So I, as I mentioned, Costa Rica is a very politically stable country known for its peace vocation. We're very strategically located right at the heart of the Latin American continent, American continent in the region we call Central America. 14% of our government expenditure goes to education, which is nearly twice as much as uh, the percentage that other OCD countries uh, a lot uh, in this sector, and we have a 15% annual growth in technical graduates for service operations. Uh, like I mentioned, our main language, and this was one of the questions that came in the morning, is Spanish, but in Costa Rica you have a very highly English-speaking uh, workforce, and that, like I said, has been identified 
by many companies, including, of course, the IT ones. And it's not only in the urban areas, I have to say Costa Rica is very touristic, so even in the urban uh, rural areas, you find highly proficient people in English. And one of the objectives that our current administration has is not only to promote our free trade zone regimes in the urban areas, but also across the whole country. So we are an exporter of high value added services. We're a top global destination for business services. We have 65 shared service center stores in our country for, for the biggest companies. Uh, and so many Indian uh, staff, for example, working for Amazon, Deloitte, and so many big companies constantly travel from India to Costa Rica to train or take part in business meetings. And I have to say, we have seen also a recent increase of, of some of these Indian staff being transferred to Costa Rica for a temporary position. They love the country, they stay. So we have a lot of Indian parents that are now parents of Costa Rican children. So a presence of 16 of the 100 global tech leader uh, companies have opened their operations in our country. And we have a robust network of free trade agreements that give you access to two third percent of the world's GDP. Uh, the bilateral relations between Costa Rica and India have witnessed steady growth and are built on shared values and mutual interests. The potential for bilateral and investment between India and Costa Rica is ample and extends across various sectors. You can see the sectors on the screen. The current trade between the two countries is $253 million dollars with India exporting 192 million and Costa, uh, to Costa Rica and importing only 61. So similarly to what the ambassador of Uruguay was saying, it's not a balanced trade and we definitely hope to see more exports from Costa Rica coming into India. And where we've been very successful, like I said, is in, in the attracting of investment of Indian companies to our country. Uh, the potential, however, is very promising. Uh, there is currently uh, Costa Rica and India established a joint economic trade committee in 2021. That committee is set to meet this year. So we definitely hope that that's going to facilitate to uh, work on any bottlenecks that there may be and to really reinvigorate the trade relations between our two countries. So some of the areas of cooperation that we have identified is in textiles, agriculture, renewable energies, biotechnologies, aeronautics. We have a, a special, a, he's a Costa Rican astronaut that worked in NASA for many years. Now he's retired from NASA. He's come back and he has this a, development center. He's working on plasma projects. So there's even a lot of opportunities in very specific areas also related to aeronautics in Costa Rica, satellite technology, IT, of course, and the pharma industry. The top exports from India to Costa Rica currently are motor vehicles, cars, agrochemicals, drug formulations, biologic uh, and biological, two and three wheelers, iron and steel, and medical and scientific instruments. And the top imports from Costa Rica are mainly wood products, medical and scientific instruments, surgical instruments as well, paperboard products, computer hardware, iron and steel. It's important to also note that Costa Rica has rapidly emerged as a sought after destination for multinational companies in the tech and service industries as well as life science and manufacturing activities. Uh, you can see here some of the big Indian IT giants that I mentioned that are present in Costa Rica. Uh, HCL Technologies even decided to, to expand their operations in a tech education specific sector because they have found that Costa Rica is fertile ground for this type of innovative expansions. UPL in the agribusiness has the regional hub office in Costa Rica and are in the process of also expanding. 
We are an open market economy. We have free trade zone regimes that give special benefits. As our colleague from Mexico explained, if you want some specific details, we can definitely come back to you and give you the exact tax exemptions and so forth and put you in contact with the necessary counterparts in Costa Rica if this is something you would like to explore. We are an OECD member, which also demonstrates uh, our dedication to economic progress. And we were the fourth member from Latin America to become a, a member of the OECD. Uh, I would like to briefly just mention two uh, main important events that take part on an annual uh, basis in Costa Rica. One is called the Buyers Traders Mission. Uh, some of you may be aware of this event. It's a, a big session that since COVID has also been taking part in a hybrid way where you get to meet with the top Costa Rican exporters and have B2B meetings. Uh, the idea is to do a matchmaking beforehand, so you're asked to give a profile of your company, your specific interests, and based on the information you give, then you're matched with uh, com Costa Rican companies. Uh, you're given the opportunity for these meetings, and then uh, you can take this forward. Uh, and then parallel to this event, which is, like I said, quite relevant, we also have a, the audiovisual market of Central America and the Caribbean. Uh, Costa Rica, not only the region, but Costa Rica itself has made the film audiovisual sector as one of our main investment uh, attractions uh, segments. And we are very much looking forward to having Indian movies being possibly produced in Costa Rica. Uh, we have a lot of benefits that we give. We don't give incentives, and I want to be clear about this in terms of travel, subsidies, and so forth, but you do have a very good conditions in terms of tax exemptions and cash paybacks and so forth. A plus, you have a country that offers you very diverse locations, skilled a film sector a crew staff a, in a very small geography. So this is something of what I mentioned. So I think in terms of uh, Costa Rican content and outsourcing services on demand, that may be of attraction for you. This is some of the incentives that uh, we have. Uh, and a law to attract film incentives was actually passed in 2018. We have our National Film Commission that is ready to, to engage with any project that has a legitimate and a, a serious proposal to, to explore Costa Rica as a film destination. So thank you, Dainevat. That is what I wanted to share. Uh, I haven't expanded on tourism, but just to give you a figure, like I mentioned, we're one of the top tourist destinations in the world. Think of Costa Rica, a country of 5 million, and before COVID, we were receiving more than 3 million tourists annually. Uh, Right now, we're back to where we were. Uh, most of these tourists do come from North America and Europe, but we have seen a growing trend of Indians, many interested in bird watching, ecotourism, photography tours, but Costa Rica is also an ideal destination in terms of weddings. We have seen weddings of Indians with Costa Ricans or Indians living in the US that marry in Costa Rica and then their Indian families travel. And if you do have relatives in the U.S., if you ask them, or North America, if you ask them about Costa Rica, you'll be surprised that to, many of them may have been there, and if not, it's in the top of their bucket list. So thank you, and I'm more than welcome to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you.